humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, good morning, everyone. Praise Jesus. Amen. There's a song that you are supposed to sing again, Jindaji. Thank you. Now that whether you can complete the song. So the song is I must have. I must have Jesus. It's not there, it's not in the hymn book. But I wanted to, thank you. <coughs> the song is there. Yeah. All the mind stands up. I must sing, let's start, eh? I must I know it's a new song, Kumbe, it's a song that is known by almost everyone. I would like to remind you once again that I don't think we have few, I don't know what is happening. I just remind you that I may ask you questions at the end of this sermonette. I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher, I'm not a pastor, so I may be tempted to ask you questions. Thank you very much, Mchungaji. And uh, today, uh, I know people like singing. People like singing, they don't like uh, sermons. See, sometimes sermons, according to some people, are boring. And they would rather sing a whole day. If you sing a whole day, you won't get bored. And today, I promise you, we are going to sing. Praise the Lord. So she stood there, uh, perplexed by the suffering of the inmates at Martin, a prison. Their cries and anguish touched her immensely. She had no silver, no gold to give them and to relieve their pains. She had no power to offer any freedom to them because she was not a politician, of course. She put herself in their shoes. She saw their remorseful hearts, perhaps regretting their past mistakes. And she cried as she thought about their rejections, suffering, and hopelessness. Those were the inmates at that prison. Then she remembered about the only thing that she could offer, the only thing that was free, and she could offer it because she ate it. Then she thought about some inspirational words from the Bible and songs, and she sang those songs to them. Without knowing the impact of the message that she delivered to the inmates, she heard a shout from the, one of the inmates exclaiming, Good Lord, good Lord, do not pass me by. She had just introduced hope in the heart of this inmate. She, the statement reminded her of the blind beggars in the book of Matthew chapter 20 from 29 to 31. Later that night, she penned the song, Pass Me Not. Can we sing that song together? Just a stanza. Wow. 
that is Fanny Crosby. The story that I've read belongs to the blind lady called Fanny Crosby, who is regarded as the queen of inns. She was born in southeast uh, Putnam County, New York, that is United States of America, in 1820. So Crosby became ill when she was six weeks. She had uh, some eye problem, and then the family doctor was not around. So the family called um, a visiting a doctor in court who uh, prescribed applying some mustard uh, for treatises, something like porridge, something which is hot, was applied in her eyes or on her eyes, and then she recovered, but she turned blind. She became blind at the age of six weeks. A few months later, Crosby's father died, and her mother was forced to find work at a maid, as a maid to support the family. And Fanny was mostly raised by her Christian grandmother. And I think that is where she got her inspiration from. So Francis Crosby uh, wrote more than 9,000 hymns. 9,000 hymns, some of which are among the most popular in every Christian denomination. She wrote so many that she was forced to use pen names. Pen names refers to pseudonym, using other names apart from your own name. And for the most people, the most remarkable thing about her was that she had done, I mean, she had done so in spite of her blindness. Some publishers during that time were hesitant, were hesitant to have so many hymns by one person in their hymns. So Crosby used nearly 200 pseudonyms during her career. Her love of poetry began early. Her first verse, written at age eight, that is eight years, echoed a lifelong refusal to feel sorry for herself. Could you project that verse? I'd like to read the, as the project, I'd like to read that, that poem, a poem that she wrote at age eight. This is what she wrote. Oh, what a happy soul I am. Though I cannot see, I'm resolved that in this world, contented I'll be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't, to weep and sigh, because I'm blind, I cannot, and I won't. I repeat the poem again. You just listen to the poem, and I'm reading, you can be able to tell that is the beginning of a line, and that is the end of a stanza. So the first line, oh, what a happy soul I am. Though I cannot see, I'm resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't, uh, other people don't, to weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot, and I won't. That is the, uh, the poem. You can see this, uh, this child is only nine, I mean only eight years. And you can see she can be able to compose a poem applying all the rules of a poem. For example, if I really look at second, uh, when you look at second line, what is the, can you read the second line of that? Although I cannot see, can you read the, uh, the fourth line? Contented I'll be. Though I cannot see, contented I'll be. C, B. Can you see that is something called rhyme scheme? You see, someone is eight years only, and I spent like a whole semester teaching some people about rhyme scheme. I don't even name them. They were just looking at me as if I'm from Jupiter somewhere. What are you talking about? Eight years having mastery of rhyme schemes, writing a poem that can be able to resonate with those people who are writing, the great, the prominent writers of poem or poets. But she wrote that one. So that is what we call God's grace. That in that poem you can see that, oh, what a happy soul I am. That she's blind, but she can afford to say that I'm happy. 
what a happy soul I am, though I cannot see. She said that I'm resolved that in this world, in this world, contented I will be. I will be contented with whatever I am, though I'm blind. And she asked in the second uh, stanza, how many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. And she says to weep. For me to cry, I would. I will not cry. And sigh because I'm blind. And to be miserable. To be miserable because I'm blind. I won't do that. And she says, I cannot. And she emphasizes that by saying, I would. Later, she stated this. It seems, listen attentively, it seems intended by the blessed providence of God that I should be blind, that God purposed me to be blind all my life, and I thank him for the, dispen for the dispensation. If perfect earthly sight were offered me tomorrow, if God comes and asks me, would you like to see tomorrow? That is what she says. If perfect earthly sight were offered me tomorrow, I would not accept it. I might not have sung hymns to the praise of God if I had been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. Praise the Lord. That despite her being blind, she says that even if God offers her that opportunity to see, she will never accept that one. Because she says, if at all she was born seeing, she would be distracted by those things that distract us. Are we distracted by some things we all see that she would accept because she would be able to be distracted and so she would be able to write all those hymns that she has written. There is a preacher who said something about her that I think this is direct quote from the preacher. I think it is a great pity. This is a great pity that Master did not give you sight when he showed you so many other gifts upon you. It is a pity, just pity, that God did not give you sight, yet he gave you many other gifts. But she had answer at hand, and she says, do you know that if at birth I had been able to make one petition, if at birth, if I was given that opportunity to give one petition, it would have been that I was born blind, praise the Lord. That I would, I would ask to be born blind, because when, when I get to heaven, the first face that ever will gladden my heart will the sight of that will, will be the face of my Savior. When I see fewer. Yeah. That when I go to heaven, the first face that I will see when I open, because eventually when you go to heaven, there will be no blind. Everyone will be able to see. So she means that when she go to heaven, because of course she died blind, but when Jesus comes the second time, she'll be able to resurrect and she'll be able to have her eyes back. And so the first face that she'll be able to see is that one of the Savior. Is that not powerful? That you are blind all along, but you like that when you open your face, I mean, when you open your eyes, the first face that you see is that of the Savior. That Fanny Crosby never considered blindness entrance, instead she attributed a keen memory to the lack of sight. Penning her first poem at the tender age of hate, Fanny wrote about the malady, how many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot, and I would. And these are some of, he, I mean, some of her famous quotes that have not uh, for a moment, in more than 85 years, felt a spark of resentment. For more than 85 years, she has never uh, had any resentment toward the doctor who administered that, that medicine. She never regretted, she never felt like resentment towards him. And she says, uh, because I've always believed that the good Lord by this means, consecrated me to the work that I'm still permitted to do. One as if you That God will answer your prayers better than you think. And of course, one will always get exactly what he has asked for. Whatever you ask for from the Lord, he will be able to provide it unto you. 
we all have sorrows. Of course, our pastor has already pre uh, prayed about the sorrows that we have, the cares that we do have, the school fees, what to eat, what to wear, but we have all those. But there's something that she's trying to remind us, that we have those disappointments, but one must never forget that if commented to God, they will issue good things to, or you'll be able to issue good things to those people who trust him. His whole solution is far better than any we would conceive. The Lord is the sunshine of my soul. To God be the glory. Those are words by uh, Fanny Acrosby. Some of the hymns that she was able to write is the song that we sang at the beginning. So the first song is uh, Blessed Assurance. We sang that song and we usually sing many songs without knowing that the, the hymn, the, 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 the writer of that song is Crosby. So the first song is Blessed Assurance. Can we sing the first stanza of that song? not the first song, but among the songs that she, uh, she wrote. The second one is Close to Thee. The other one is Hum Thine, Ho Lord. The fourth one is Pass Me, Not Ho Gracious, A Savior. Tell me the story of Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus. To God be the glory. Can we sing that? At least we can sing the whole of that song. The other song is safe in the arms of Jesus. Rescue the perishing. I am thine, O Lord. Most of those songs, we know them. We can sing them comfortably. And we have sung them in the past. And we'll continue to sing 
those songs again and again. Those are just few. We have seen, he has written how many songs? She has written how many songs? 9,000 songs, meaning the songs that we can, how many songs do we have in that song book? Just a few. And so she has written 200, meaning she has written most of those songs. You may not see her name, but it is her name. It is her who wrote this, the song, because as we've seen, or we have heard that she was able to write using her pseudonyms. So most of the songs that we sing in many churches are written by Fanny Acrosby, despite of her being blind. I would like to connect that one with uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 56, verse 1 uh, to 14. That in this verse, I'm just for a phrase, I would, be, uh, I would go verse by verse, that in this Psalms, David especially describes his fears and the troubles he has with people. Yet in spite of those who are trying to harm him, he puts his trust in God, just like Fanny Crosby that the doctor wanted to harm her. Maybe it was not intentional, because after discovering that uh, she had turned blind, the doctor disappeared. He ran away, and he was never, uh, they were never able to locate him. So we have enemies around us, people who want to harm us. But God promises us that he is always going to be with us, if at all we trust him. One as if you will. You keep the track of all your sorrows. You can be able to keep track of all your sorrows. You have collected all your tears. He has put them in a bottle. Just imagine all the tears that you have shed, maybe because of those people who mistreat or those people who are against you. God says that he has been able to collect all the tears in a bottle and he can be able to, he can be able to count them. Say this one was because of so and so. If we can share our burdens with the Lord and trust God who loves us beyond measure, then we will find peace in the midst of chaos. Peace, and that possesses all understanding. That is the book of Psalms chapter 56, verses 1 to 4. Isaiah uh, chapter 12 says that, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust him and do not be afraid because, yeah, the Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. God is not only the source of righteousness, justified anger over sin, but Isaiah says that he has also become our salvation. Praise the Lord. So if we try to think about Crosby and what she was able to go through, uh, being uh, blind, you would almost think that that was the end of her. You are in different situations that sometimes you can't see uh, tomorrow. You may not even think about it. Think about this blind girl who could be able to contribute immensely as far as uh, mission is concerned. You see, it is not just a matter of writing her uh, hymns. She was able to write many poems, and she was also a human rights activist as far as those people who are disabled is concerned. And so she met many presidents in America in a zeal to champion for those people. So she contributed immensely, not only in the hymns, not only in the poetry world, but also in inspiring people. And as we have seen, the, 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 the passage that I've read first is in a situation where she's trying to talk to people, to inspire people, and that is where the song, Pass Me Not, was uh, or, I mean, where that song came from. That we open our hearts, the floodgates of hearts, if we permit our thoughts to be engrossed with the troubles and trifles tri tri of hearts, our hearts will be filled with unbelief, gloom, and foreboding. If we set our affection on the things above, what does it feel? If we set our affections on things above, then the voice of Jesus will speak to our hearts, murmuring will cease, and fixing thoughts will be lost in the praise of our Redeemer. When I see you, that there is power in music. Even when you come here and you feel like you are down, and you hear a song being sung, you'll be able to wake up again, because God, I believe, 
I should believe that God is in the music. I would like to confess something about, about my fascination with Fanny Crosby. That when I saw Fanny Crosby, I, I was not supposed to preach today, but I saw the name Fanny Crosby. And I remember standing and speaking to many people in church about Fanny Crosby. And I said, that is the person I would like to talk about. Because I try to go through the songs. I try to go through the quotes that she has written. And I get empowered. One as if you will. I think the same message about Fanny Crosby is going to inspire you today. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. King of glory, again this morning we come before your presence. We thank you because you are able to speak to us. We pray that you will continue to speak to us through the power of music. Give that person who is hopeless hope. Give that person who is crying for you a peace of mind. And meet our needs, Lord, because you are worthy as you prepare us for eternity. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.